right, ladies and gentlemen, day two of Media Summit. I, I call it Media Days, but Media Summit, joined by the voice of the Bulldog, Mr. Paul Leffler. Paul, thank you for uh, joining us from our sports. Hey, my pleasure. So, uh, day two already. Yesterday was, of course, the, the West Division, Fresno State. What did you take away from everyone else that you interviewed, how they perceive Fresno State right now at the current state? Well, I think one thing that struck me was how much respect the other coaches have for Jeff Tedford yeah. and his track record. And they expect big improvement from Fresno State. They see some talent there. And I think all the coaches echoed kind of the same theme, that outside of what San Diego State has proven to be, there's a lot of uncertainty. And I think there's opportunity there for teams like Fresno State to make a big step forward. Now, looking at the, the media polls and Fresno State picked to finish last, were you semi-surprised or is that what you anticipated? You know, I, I see Fresno State, San Jose State, and Nevada all kind of in the same all right. boat. All new head coaches, some talent returning, some talent added, but what's going to happen? So I, I think they're kind of in, in the same spot. I wasn't surprised to see the Bulldogs at the bottom. They had the worst record last year. Yeah. They won one game and it was an FCS team. And they've FCS. only beaten two FBS teams combined in the last two years. So I, I think the track record says, yeah, that's where they should be. And it's up to the Bulldogs now to prove that they belong higher. Right, and uh, talking to Keyshawn and Nathan yesterday, uh, they seem kind of quite a bit stepped back about it because, I mean, looking back at last season, yes, we won, uh, Fresno State won one game. But there was a lot of close games, you know, uh, non-conference, Tulsa stands out on me, Tulsa, you know, conference games, you had, you know, Nevada, you had Hawaii, so there was a lot of close games, and in my opinion, maybe a little coaching a little there, and I think a, a coach like Coach Denford could probably sway a couple games that way. Uh, what are your takes on just transitioning from last year to what you saw, you know, winter workouts, to spring to now? heading to fall camp? Well, I think you do have to be optimistic that this coaching staff can make a difference, um, that physicality can make a difference. Yeah. You know, that the, the word that I know that just grated on people in the community when they heard it said about their Bulldogs was, these guys are soft. Players don't want to be called soft. The team doesn't want to be called soft. And it's up to this year's team to prove that they're back to Bulldog football, that they're tough and they're aggressive, that they're physical. Uh, and they have a chance to show that early on against some of the most physical teams in the country. So I think if they can do that, grab some momentum early. Um, that Nevada game to me is really pivotal. It's the first conference game. You've got Alabama and Washington in your rearview mirror by then. You've got to buy the week before. And it's a chance to start out in the first place in your division. Um, if you get a little momentum going, that's the most powerful force in sports. And if you get players to start to believe that they can win, that's when those wins start to materialize. So I think, you know, between coaching, between more physicality, and just the maturation of some young but talented players, there's the potential for some, some big improvement. I'm with you on that. Uh, and that, to me, is a very pivotal game at Nev uh, versus Nevada. And it's coming off a of bye, bye week. So I think it's all leading up to that big week uh, with Nevada. A uh, couple things, uh, Chase and Virgil was, you know, Coach Stafford talked a, a lot about Chase and Virgil. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a great, you know, not saying he's going to be starting right away, but I think he's going to be the starting quarterback. I think he's worked. I think he's going to prove it. And just speaking on with Coach Tedford, I think that uh, he's going to surprise a lot of people. I mean, just having Coach Tedford in, in your corner is a big plus. So uh, what do you think about the, the chances of, of Virgil, you know, getting a nice, solid first full year? Well, I think it's uh, at this point, He's the lead dog. It's his to lose, yeah. I would say, but it's not his, no. period. Um, so Jorge Reyna is going to have something to say about that. Christian Rossi might have something to say. A couple walk-on freshmen coming into fall camp this week might have yeah. something to say about that. But what I've heard from the players is that they see a different Chase and Virgil, a guy who's really invested, who's working harder than ever before, who's very motivated, uh, a guy who Jeff Tedford has influenced already and is bringing out the best in. So what is that going to look like once fall ball really starts? Can he be the leader of this team? Can he run fearlessly, not timidly? Right. Um, can he make decisions in a moment with aggression and not concern? 
if he develops into that guy, that could tri uh, trigger a huge improvement. I mean, the trajectory of the season could just really change if he comes out and can execute off the bat. Because so far in his Bulldog career, he really has improved this. Uh, and Jeff Tedford has that track record with other quarterbacks of developing them into the, some of the best in the country. So if he can do that with Chase and Virgil and take him from what we saw last year, to the kind of success other Tedford quarterbacks have had, uh, that could make Fresno State climb up in a hurry. And uh, you, you mean you look at it, you look at it right now, and there's a lot of quarterbacks. You know, specifically this day, you know, you got Brett Rippin, you got obviously Josh, you know, Allen for Fireball, and uh, Nick Stevens at Colorado State, and. To me, it's like there's not really that much West quarterbacks. You know, they're very young. They're unknown commodity. How is is this considered a quarterback league? You think, Mount West, or is it becoming that? I think it is. I think you got some of the best and, and even some of the most experienced in the country. Uh, I think it's ten of the twelve teams have a returning quarterback this year, and then you've got Nevada, who's bringing in a transfer from Alabama at that position. Um, you know, and there, I'm sure you're going to see some guys who show a lot of improvement. Guys like Chapman at San Diego State and Brown at Hawaii don't have a ton of experience. Um, and, and they're probably going to be different guys this year. They've got enough experience to grow. Uh, with Virgil, you know, I, I think he's got a lot of room for improvement. He's got the opportunity to take that step forward. And the sooner he does that, the sooner Fresno State's going to be a factor in this league again. And then a couple last things. Well, yeah, I mean, we alluded to, you know, spring ball. And not that many things will happen in spring, but... You, you you got the feeling that this is a different, you know, offense, a defense. Very technical. I mean, I got the sense it was very more technical. They, they were working on getting it right, no matter how long they did it. But they just want the technicality, their, their verse, to get in there versus years past where they, you know, brushed through it. What did you take on, you know, just the coaching philosophy of Tedford and how spring ball went and how the spring game that you guys covered? Yeah, I think um – you saw his intentionality, his drive, his attention to detail. Yes. I think you've seen players respond. I think their execution will be better. Hopefully their physicality will be better. And even moving from a 3-4 to a 4-3, if they can plug the right bodies in there, mm -hmm. they should be better against the run, which is going to be a huge factor in their chances to win. And then last thing, what's your take on uh, most of the Mountain West Conference having a lot of Valley ties? Whether it be players, coaches, but yeah. uh, talking to some of the coaches now, you know, they're kind of a bit worried because they know Tedford has been on, on the Valley coaches now, yeah. and and so now now they see that uh, they're gonna have to work an extra, you know, additionally hard to, to get that recruit. But now it's changed, you know, a, a complete 180 to it was before. Yeah, and I think that's the way it needs to be. If Fresno State's gonna be prominent in football, it needs to be the Valley's team, and it needs to have the Valley's players. And when you look at the preseason all-conference list, and there are five guys from the Valley, right. but none of them play for Fresno State, it's not what you want to see. Coach Tedford's determined to change that. You know, his response to my asking him about that was, well, that shows you how much talent is in the Valley. And he's right. And he's out there mining that talent now in this next recruiting class. I think we'll reflect that. Cool. Any last words before we let you go, Paul? No, it's going to be exciting to see how it all plays out. And there's some big-time opponents coming to Bulldog Stadium, so I hope the fans come out and see just how much in person. Right. Fresno State has improved. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. You bet, man.